So my uh, second film dedicated to the relationship between philosophy and everyday life is um, focused, will be focused on, again, on Michel Deserto, but mainly on his, uh, the most popular and most influential book, which you have on your platform, The Practice of Everyday Life. Uh, in the first film, I uh, told you about uh, bibliography, I mean, texts and uh, articles and book, um, which you can uh, read uh, from your platform. But I forget to, to tell you perhaps the most important uh, uh, things when uh, he was born and when he passed away. So uh, you, of course, will find easily this data, but just to for sake of being sure that you are aware of about whom I am speaking today. So he was born in 1925 and passed away in 1986. Uh, so relatively young, he, he died uh, when he was 61. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the, what is important that his life is divided uh, clearly between his uh, a very regular traditional life as a historian, as a Jesuit, as a theologian. From um, He joined the religious order Jesuits in, in 50s. So uh, for almost 30 years, uh, he spent uh, his life as a Jesuit. And uh, at the beginning in 50s, 60s, even 70s, he, he wrote about history of the order relationship between history and uh, and the theology and the religious institutions, etc. So we can say very traditional historian and a theologian. And as I mentioned, uh, that in the 60s, this uh, student revolt um, changed him completely. So he was very attentive to what was going on on the streets of Paris in the 60s. And after, after being so enthusiastically involved he himself in this movement, and uh, he started to, to work together with the students, with young people who uh, discovered this new dimension of um, the academic life. So not only uh, sitting in the archives, uh, reading what, what happened centuries ago in 16th, 17th century, as he did, and with success, he, he, he published uh, very important and significant books related to the history of Christianity, of the Catholic Church, particularly in France, but started from, from uh, the end of 60s, he was more and more aware that really what, what make us who we are, they are uh, daily practices. And why it is so important? I think this is the worthy to, to ask as ourselves these questions. You are students, I'm a teacher, and we can say, well, what defined our identity is that you are studying, I am teaching, and we have this exchange of ideas, right? But we are not asking, uh, you are not asking me, I'm not asking you what, when you wake up, what you drink, what you eat, where you buy uh, your um, articles, uh, which you need for daily life, uh, which uh, kind of films are you watching, uh, where you are going for your daily walks. Perhaps you have uh, some uh, unusual, uh, I don't know, habits which characterized you. But for exactly this new approach of anthropology, and it became, as I said, after today, after 40, 50 years, uh, this new attention to our daily life is almost present everywhere, but we are not aware of it. So not being aware is a key word. 
So um, Deserteau was very much interested in psychology. He was interested in, in Freud. He wrote about Freud. He was interested on Michel, de Fou Michel Foucault. He took part on, on a study group of Lacan. So he was really involved in the, in the most, um, I would say, revolutionary move, intellectual movements in uh, philosophy, in psychology, uh, in theology, and in philosophy. So all this uh, make him aware that really our not conscious practices are really the decisive. So if we want, if we want to understand who we really are, we have to be focused exactly on our daily practices. And I think this is the most uh, prosaic uh, discovery which we can think about, but nevertheless is revolutionary. And, and this book, and when I read it for the first time, I thought this is not uh, an academic book. It's, it's, it's not a serious philosophy. When you write about cooking, about uh, buying uh, products, etc., it's, it's not very philosophical. But it, see, it, it nevertheless is translated, if some of you are, prefer to read Polish or are interested in read Polish, both of his volumes dedicated to, to uh, daily life is translated into Polish. In Polish, the title is Wynaleść codzienność sztuki działania. Wynaleść, so to invent our uh, everyday life. It means that you are not inventing actually, because we are living this life. But it means that we are reflecting upon, that you, we are aware of what we are doing, where we are going. And I think also uh, to, to jump to the present moment of, of our life in this pandemic time of COVID-19, how deeply this pandemic, uh, this virus affected our daily life. Our, limiting our leaving our house, meeting certain peoples, and this and could be a very good uh, material for reflection how pandemic uh, situation are shaping our way of thinking, how deeply we need others. So for example, looking for other people, right? How we are um, relating to others, all this is our daily life philosophy. And I think this is extremely exciting, new. And I will give you just one example of how Deserteau um, change of perspective from theory, from documents, from archives into observation of daily life, how it influenced also other fields of reflections. For example, as, as you already are aware of, I'm very much interested in sociology of religion, right? And this is, uh, or religion as such, how it is perceived, how it last year, uh, last week, we, we, we discussed how religion are affecting our, our perception of, re of the reality, different type of religion, etc., etc. And even in this field, the new um, theory, uh, anthropology of daily life, uh, affected uh, the most um, progressive, the most uh, uh, interesting studies in, in America. Um, perhaps I mention it, but I will remember this, you this name. Peter Berger, a very important sociologist of religion who spent all his life in Boston, in Boston University. He wrote several books on, on, uh, on religion, of secularization and, and after desecularization. So he used a lot of new ideas, new concepts, which really um, influenced uh, 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 the way how Americans uh, discuss today the presence of religion in, in their life. 
and his student, uh, a very important scholar, Nancy Tatum Ammerman, Nancy Tatum Ammerman, uh, is a student of Peter Berger, who passed away a few years ago, so she's uh, like inherited his uh, chair in, in Boston University. She is writing uh, about religion, uh, taking inspiration from their every life practices. And uh, I have uh, in front of me uh, have a book, Sacred Stories, Spiritual Tribes, Finding Religion in Everyday Life, in Everyday Life, you see? Already in the title of the book is this very uh, on which uh, Michel de Certeau was the first to, to reflect on it. And what it means that when, when you um, try to find uh, uh, the essence of uh, religious experience, of philosophical experience, or, of philosophical worldview in the, in the people's lives, you are not, not asking them which authors are you reading, which music are you hearing? What is important for you as the inspiration? But what you are doing? How and where you are going for your to practice your religion? Or how often are you relating to, to your um, religious followers or to your friends or to your uh, groups from your um, generation? You see, it's, it's a completely different type of questions that you are asking when you want to understand what, what certain phenomena and which kind of significance it have, they have for, for understanding of, of uh, people life, of people uh, philosophy. Uh, so it is, it's only a, a, in one example, but everywhere, and I see this more and more, more I read, more, more I am convinced that this um, intuition, because it was like intuition. Uh, you remember the last, last week I, I, I suggested you to, to see this uh, fractal interpretation of uh, uh, religious diversity. So you have this intuition from the field of mathematics and suddenly you differently understand the, 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 the rich world of, of, uh, uh, of religions around you. And here you have a similar uh, moment of, we can say, a revelation of change of paradigm, of academic or scientific paradigm. Instead of a history of ideas, instead of uh, looking how ideas are working through centuries, suddenly you are, uh, you have air, you have eye, you have smell for what is going around you. And I think this is a, a, re a revolutionary step into changing our type of reflection. And also we are more aware. We can, we can of course, include in this our um, a, now is uh, um, not a right concept is coming to my mind. Ecological, ecological um, sensitivity or ecological mentality. Because when, when you are thinking about what is going around you, you, you have more um, sense of responsibility for trees around you, for the quality of air, of water. You know, this is the... I, I think that uh, now talking to you, I, I, I think how deeply um, this simple change of perspective from a pure uh, abstract uh, speculative thinking into observation of daily life, but not of just observing, reflecting upon what it means why we are using certain things, or why, why we are avoiding certain things, 
all this is philosophy. So um, again, uh, philosophy and daily life, the practice of um, everyday life, uh, according to Michel de Certeau and those who read his uh, uh, books, how it influenced them. Uh, I, I hope that uh, it was interesting for you. And my last uh, part, the third film, will be dedicated to the more uh, free reflection of what it means for us when we open our eyes around us and what we see and what we do with what we see.